What's up YouTube? It's your boy JB and we are here tonight with the new episode review of Ready to Love on OWN. This is episode, child I think this is episode 7, hell if I know. What up episode is, it's, it's a new episode of Ready to Love. The episode was titled "Friend The Friend Zone. All right, you guys. So before we get into this review, if you guys are watching this video or any of my other videos, do me a solid favor, hit that subscribe button, you guys. Like, why are you taking me out on a date? And then at the end of the date, stiffing me with the bill because you took me out. So yeah, subscribe to the channel. Also, um, shout out to my good friend on YouTube, Ms. Misha underscore IMO. <laughs> Go check out her video. I, um, It'll be up later tonight. I know she'll either... If she's not up tonight, she'll be up in the morning. Go check her out. Hilarious. I put her um, information on the screen so you guys can check her out. And if I remember, I will link her in the description bar as well. But good, yeah, definitely go check out Ms. Misha underscore IMO. Great reviews. I love her reviews. She's a Texas, she's a Texas girl. Love her to death. Love, 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 love Misha. Like Misha, you got me over her saying, hey girl, hey, and you know, what is your other saying that I said a lot? If we're gonna get into it, let's get into it, you know, and speak your speech. That's my favorite one. Speak your speech, love it. But yeah, you guys, go check out Misha, subscribe to my channel, and subscribe to her channel. Her reviews, it's so interesting, and it's funny. Like, I've watched, like when I watch her reviews, it's like, get out of my head Misha it's like you it's like you in my head because we say the same things I'm like what the hell how do we say the same gotta be that Texas thing gotta be the Texas in us we say the same thing but yeah you guys subscribe to my channel and subscribe to her channel and like I said I'm if I remember I'm gonna I'm when I edit my stuff on my computer I'm gonna get the link to her channel JB please remember that I'm gonna link her channel in the description bar as well remember that remember that you know what? Let's type it in. But I don't use my notes when I... We're going to remember it. But yeah, you guys, without further ado, let's go ahead and talk about this episode. Because I got some stuff to say. This episode, more specifically towards the end, pissed me off. Let's talk about it. Oh, and also, you guys, thank you guys so much for la everybody last week who left comments. I know you guys, um, when, I, when I was talking about my, my head spinning, eyes, and all that stuff... I know a lot of you guys thought it, you know, um, mentioned vertigo. As far as I know, I've never been diagnosed with vertigo. I do believe it was a, for me, I think I felt like it was food poisoning because every time I ate, not to get gory or anything, it never stayed. It never stayed. It came back up one way or the other. And I've had, I've had food poisoning that bad, that bad before where I lose my, you know, my eyesight starts to go haywire once or twice but yeah thank you guys so much for that one also thank you guys so much for the comments about the previous ready to love video that i had did where someone got in the comment section about me talking about you know the female anatomy up here <laughs> but yeah you guys let's go ahead and get this episode review shall we? all right you guys i think it might have been misha that mentioned this in her last review and i, I didn't pay attention to it it was either misha or it was either um, Bondi. Somebody may have mentioned of this. I just don't remember which one it was. If you guys take a look at the, when the men meet up in the gentlemen's lounge versus the women, they meet up in different places. Like, you would literally think that that is a lounge that the men are meeting up at, but the women, you're in a restaurant. Like, you're out and open in a restaurant. So, yeah, this week, the men are meeting up with the Tommy. So, it's the week, it's the men's week to, you know, send a woman home. And Tommy tells the men this week he wants them to introduce the ladies to, you know, some of their good friends. So that's what the men are going to do in this episode. So the first two men that we see, we see Joel and we see. And most times when I do these reviews, I'm going off of memory. I, I don't hardly use my notes. But um, the first we see Joel and we saw it was um, Chris. So Chris was doing a podcast. So he had a friend. He had a, 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 a lady friend and a man. And then with Joel, he's doing a crab boil. He has a, he has two of his homies 
and a, a, a lady there as well. Which that was the thing with the guy with everybody this week. Most of the men had one male friend and one 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 friend that was a woman. Yeah, I think so. So yeah, like I said, Joel is doing a crab boil and Chris is doing the podcast. So Chris is having his friends meet up with Amber and Joel is having his friends meet up with Vernicia. And the date with Amber, it seemed like it was a good one. So I know one of Chris's, the, the woman that was with Chris, she asked, you know, Amber the question of, you know, has she told her friends about, you know, Chris? Has she told her family about Chris? She says, no, I haven't told anybody about Chris. And Chris was like, you know, the friend, she looked like that was like a big red flag for her, which <clears throat> they're on a dating show. So that means that they should be, should be, should be being the operative word. They should be dating other people, not just, you know, solely putting their eggs in just one basket. Like when you go to Vegas and you, you know, you plan on the, you know, on the table, on the craps table, you know, you put your chips wherever, but you don't put all your chips just on one, in one spot. You, you, you to try to get some money, you put it a little here, a little there, a little there, maybe put a, a one chip here. But some of the women I'm noticing, actually some of the women and the men, actually at this point I feel like it's all the women and the men. I feel like they have their select one person that they have and that's the person that they're fixated on and they're not looking at anybody else. <clears throat> so that was it with Amber. Um, yeah, we'll come back and wrap it up. So like I said, Joel, Joel was on a crab boil. So his friends were, and it was mostly the woman, she was talking to Bernicia. So Bernicia, she says that she's a little bit territorial. Now the friend took a, took a little dislike to that. And with Bernicia, I tweeted this. I think that Bernicia, like I just said about the, you know, the, the you know, the, um, the gambling analogy. I feel that Bernicia, which she liked my tweet, by the way, and Joel liked it and retweeted it. Where Bernicia, I feel like Bernicia is doing herself a disservice. I feel that Bernicia is, you know, solely placing her bet on Joel instead of actually getting to know the other guys. And I think that that could be a hindrance to her going forward. Because if, if, in the, if the guys get into a deliberation and it comes down to a thing of who do I like, who am I not feeling, and if all the guys, if all the guys, with the exception of one guy, says your name, are you doing yourself a real? Are you really doing yourself a service? And I have to say no. Um, where are we at? So yeah, I just think she's doing. I think Bernicia is doing herself. I actually think. So as far as people who I think are doing themselves a disservice. I think Bernicia is doing herself a disservice. I believe Chris is doing himself a disservice. Ron is, I'm not going to say Ron. I'm going to say, I feel like Ron and AJ are okay. They're mixing and mingling. Alexis is not mixing and mingling. I'm like, well, yes, yeah, she is, which we'll talk about that as well later in the review. Uh, actually, let's go ahead and talk about it. So on next week's episode, the clip that they showed, AJ is kissing Alexis and I'm like whoa where did that come from I would have never get I mean the way you the the first date you had with that woman you were so turned out by her talking about sex but whatever AJ is playing a game like y'all can't tell me he's not so Joel's the one friend she asked both Joel and Bernicia if they are looking to get married again I don't know if Bernicia necessarily answered the question Joel said yes he you know if he meets somebody and he gets to that point yes but he's also you know trying to caution himself in order for himself not to hit you know a brick wall um so with Joel's friends one of them the lady she feels that there was a red flag with Bernicia about the territorial thing I don't necessarily know if that's a red flag for me I don't see that as, I mean, I guess you could say it's a red flag, but 
let me know in the comment section do you guys think that that's a red flag that she says she's a little bit territorial and for me when Bernicia says she's territorial I was getting the vibe of in this process the fact that his friend was talking about Joe Welch you know he babies with the women a lot you know he gives them that New Orleans baby you know so I thought that's what she meant like you know I'm his number one and you know all these other women feel that they have a connection with him I thought that's what she that was what she was giving that's the vibe I got I didn't think it was a territorial thing of if we date each other if we date each other get married or whatever that you can't hang out with your friends like you always got to be around me you always got to be up under me like that kind of territorial like who is she I've never met her like I didn't get that I didn't get that territorial vibe but I mean you guys can definitely get down in the comment section below and let me know what type of vibe you got from it did you get that she was like oh you know you know arms clenched clenched together this is my man look at him if you want to did you get that kind of vibe or did you get the vibe of with this show that she likes him she wants to be his number one and she's and, she, and he's her number one let me know in the comment section below but let's move on you guys all right you guys next let's talk about jason so jason his date i was pleasantly surprised i was actually surprised about his date choice because when when it, when we when he first sat down with his two friends at the bowling alley liz walked in i'm like wait a minute liz and then i was like why is jason wasting his time why not not wasting his time why is jason wasting liz's time let's put it that way because we all know jason is wasting liz's time jason is not interested in liz in the slightest bit i wish this man would stop playing with her and stop playing with my intelligence like bruh i can see you clearly what you are interested in in Liz is the fact that Liz is this goes back to the masquerade ball Jason is interested in Liz because of the masquerade ball because you know when Liz showed up to the party she had that body yaddy yaddy and he liked her body yaddy yaddy like he wanted to be like LSG with you know my body all over your body you know he wanted to be like that that is LSG right That's LSG, right? That is LSG. Child, I gotta look it up. Cause I hate being wrong. Don't y'all judge me either. I don't need the judgment. Don't need it. Okay, I was right. I know that was LSG, my body. So yeah, that's what Jason is. Jason is my body all over your body you know body yaddy 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 that's jason and i want him to stop playing with playing with my intelligence that's the only thing that you saw with liz because other any i mean you had not you wouldn't even bat an eyelash at liz prior to that but you know he also surprised me in this that he had a date with so kyra was there as well so it's a double date so you know his friends are you know getting to know kyra and liz and they asked him some questions you know his the, the the one friend she was talking about how jason is a stand-up guy and he's like oh thank you i was like oh i don't care seriously i don't care <laughs> <coughs> that ain't the one so then um and actually with this date i noticed it was the male friend he didn't really ask too many questions it was the woman that was asking the question so she asked them how you know are they the alpha female type so both liz and kyra said that they're not the alpha female type that they want a man that's going you know the man they want him to lead in the relationship which nothing's wrong with that now his little home girl she turned me off i'm gonna keep it real with you she turned me off because she called and you know that came back up later in the episode she called liz a stiff like i can feel the i can feel god around her girl what does that mean is that a bad thing that she's religious is that a bad thing that she believes you know she is all about the lord like girl what 
just say that you didn't like her because she's an older looking she she's older and you know Kyra is more of, of his his speed you know she's younger like say what you say what you want to say like say what you want to say I feel like it was the age I feel like it was an age thing and honestly what Liz is what four years older than Jason so girl sit down and shut up I'm talking about she's a stiff Oh, you know what? I know why she's. I, I think I know why she's calling her a stiff. You realize your friend ain't gonna get no play. Well, he probably said. He probably has said that. Cause didn't Liz ask him in a few a few episodes? Yep, when they went on that date, she asked him. No, 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 no. It was at the masquerade ball. She asked him about sex, and he said he could. It would be hard, but he could do it. That was a setup. I just thought about that. That was a bit of a setup. Cause the because the, the both of his friends, they are talking about the fact that no, it was the homeboy that said she was a stiff. It was the homeboy that said she was a stiff. So yeah, Jason has talked to them about the fact that Liz does not want to have sex before marriage. That's what that is. Jason, I see you and you ain't slick. But let's move on. Oh yeah, and both suffice it to say, both of them like Kyra. They think that Kyra was more of his speed. Take it how you want to take All it. All right, you guys. Next up, we got AJ. AJ is on a date with Kyra. Um, I really, really, really want to know what the budget was for these dates this season. Because a good chunk of these dates this season have been terrible dates. Like, I'm an outdoorsy person. I have no issues with that. Like I, I'm, I'm, I'm want to go out on a date on a go. Let's go to a park. Let's have a picnic. I'm cool with that. But um, these dates are just not what I would be doing. Like AJ has taken Kyra, and they're doing outdoor volleyball. Nothing is wrong with that. I, you know, um, my local Sonic has actually the Sonic back in my hometown has a volleyball court, and we used to go there every day. We used to go there all the time when we were in high school and play volleyball. So I don't have any issues with that. But the thing is, I'm meeting your friends. So you getting me hot and sweaty. So then when I sit down with your friends, we all funky. No. I don't want to smell. I don't want to smell you. I don't want to smell you. And I don't want to smell you. And I don't want you to smell me. If you're going to smell me. I'm going to smell good. I'm going to have on, what I'm going to have on? Like, I'm going to have on something smell good. Like, we're going to have some smell good on in this beast. Like, I might wear my body lotion from, you know, my graphite body lotion from Bed Bath & Beyond. You know, I might have on my Fierce from Abercrombie and Fitch. Like, we're going to have something good on. I'm going to have, like, I got some more cologne. Actually, where is my cologne? I really wish these people would sit the flying hell down you know it is really taking everything out of me not to get ethnic and go upstairs but I don't want these white people calling the cops on me for no reason so you know it is what it is but yeah I just wasn't a fan of the, the volleyball date like if we if we know each other and we've been if we if we know each other and we've been on each other for a while, then sure let's go on a let's go play volleyball. That's cool. But if it's my first time meeting you, that's not my idea of uh, that's not the idea of me meeting your friends for the first time. No. So immediately, Jason, not Jason, AJ's friend. I don't forgot what her name was. She asked um, Kyra. What does Kyra feel about, you know, um, female friends? Kyra says, you know, she's had to fill the situation out. I'm going to be honest with you guys. That one kind of raised a little bit of a, a red flag with me. Because for you to say immediately come with that question. For her to immediately come with that question, it just made me wonder, has something happened between you and AJ in the past? Like, that was the first thing that came and popped into my head. But that question came up again later in the episode, which we'll talk about it. But the way she brought it up, it just seemed like, have y'all done something? <clears throat> but like I said, Kyra said she'd have to fill out the situation. 
So then Kyra asked them some questions. She asked them, do they feel that AJ is ready to love? And they, you know, the male friend says yes. And the young lady says, you know, she says yes. You know, she says he's, in his, she says he's stable in his career. Oh, is he now? So if he's stable in his career, why don't he pay Kyra back for that day he took home where she paid for it? <clears throat> Mrs. Stability, do that. Mrs. Stability, either cash app her money or sell her her money or PayPal, Venmo, whatever you got to do. Give her her money back for her date that she paid for. Since you since you so stable, since you stable, since she, your friend let her know you're not cheap, you're a cheaperton, give her her money back. Cash app, Zelle, Venmo, Venmo, PayPal. However you got to give it to her, give her her money back. Putting it that way. So when Kyra leaves the date, the friends both say that they like Kyra, but they feel that her guard is up. Hell, my guard would be up too, shit. This broke ass man took me out on a date knowing he didn't have any money and I ended up paying for it. Yes, my guard is definitely going to be up. You got me effed up. Period. Poo. Just saying. <laughs> All right, you guys, let's move on. I'm, I'm being silly at this. All right, you guys, next up, let's talk about Ron. So Ron, he's out on a date with Chris and he's out on a date with Not So Fly. So they're at a lounge. It looked like they would just rent out a room and they just in there, you know, just dancing and all kinds of stuff. Because I'm like, it does not look like y'all are at a lounge. But okay, if y'all want to tell me that, you know, but they could have been at a lounge because it is Houston. So, and Houston is open, open. So, it might have been. It might have been a lounge. But it just looked, you know, it just didn't look like one to me. But, like I said, Ron is out with his friends. His So, he has a, he has a lady friend, a woman, a friend that's a woman. And he has a man. So, like I said, Alexis and um, <clears throat> Alexis and who else did I say? Oh, Chris. Chris, I'm sorry. Chris is hella bland. She is bland. She is selfish. It's just a lot. Now, here's the thing that threw me off with Alexis, not so fly. Alexis is sitting there being so damn judgmental about what Chris had on time about she got on a cat suit with holes in it. Well, my dear, you are sitting there dressed like a whole cow. Moo. Moo. Like you sitting there dressed like a damn cow. And you talk like you got on. You look like you just went to a farm and, and you just went to whatever farm close to Houston. And actually look like you went to my hometown, you know, in Tyler or Jacksonville or Palestine. Look like you went up there and just, you know, just skinned one of the cows. Mate said, hey, make this a dress. And threw that, threw that on. Where does Ale I really want to know where does Alexa shop at? I want to shade her and say Galleria, but I can't do that because the Galleria has nice stores. The Galleria in Houston has nice stores, so I just where the hell does she shop at? Like, do you come up here to Dallas to go to Big T's Bazaar? Like, I just really wonder where does she shop at? Cause her clothes are atrocious. And like I said, the fact that she's sitting there just talking about her with her with that with that cat suit on, again, you had on a cow. An entire cow. Moo. Moo. You had on a cow. Now, I will say, with the date, however, Alexis, I liked her a lot more than Chris. Like I said, Chris, Chris has this air about her. She doesn't, she, it's, just, it's just something about Chris that I don't like. Like Bondi's been saying it for weeks that she didn't, you know, she doesn't see it for Chris. I think Misha's been saying it for weeks that she don't see it for Chris. I haven't really been paying Chris much attention, to keep it real with you guys. I haven't paid her no much attention. But Chris, when the friends were asking her questions, she's like, ooh, I didn't ask to come out. I didn't come out on an interview. It's not an interview. They're trying to get to know you and see if you're a good fit for their friend. Like with my best friend. You know, I you know her husband. We I had already knew her husband, so I didn't have to question him or anything. But when she told me that she was dating him, I'm like, okay, cool. And my first question was about her. You know, my first question was her daughter. I'm like, you know, how does he feel about that? Like, 
I don't care about, you know, how does, you know, do you think that he's going to treat her well? Like, that was my main question for her. She has a child. How are you going to treat my baby? Like, how are you going to treat her? That's all I care about. How are you going to treat her and my bestie, but more specifically, my baby? How are you going to treat my baby? Because I'm, I'm, I'm very protective of my best friend and her daughter. Like, that's my sister and... Like blood can even blood can make us any more related if we you know, like that's my sister, that's my niece. Like I want to know how you're gonna treat both of them. So the fact that she just got offended by that, and then she eventually did leave. I was like, thank you for leaving. But um, one of the questions they asked her about was, does she want kids? She said she's open to it. I'm like, okay. That's like Amber and Chris when it comes to marriage they're open to it what does that mean like for me when it comes to marriage and kids I want kids marriage not so much like I, I know for a fact that marriage is not something that I necessarily want and I can't see myself saying you know I can't see their future so I will say for this time period Marriage isn't for me, but I always say with me, I don't know what the future holds. Anything can happen in the future. I can meet someone, fall in love, and we could get married. But at this particular moment in time, marriage isn't for me. Kids, definitely something that I want. But I don't know why she got so offended by that. And then the woman that was with them, she asked them how do they feel about, you know, they, she says that Ron is the type of guy, he's like, he's on the go. So how do they feel about that? And Chris says, well, she's a flight attendant. Alexis felt some type of way about that. But I'm like, why do you feel some type of way about that? The woman's a flight attendant. So it's nothing for her to hop on a flight with him and go wherever he wants to go. There's, that's nothing. Now, I do get Alexis' response, the fact that she is a mother. So she has to make sure that all things are set up and taken care of when it comes to her son. I, I understood that, but I don't know why she felt some type of way about the fact that, what's that girl name again? Chris said that you know she is a flight attendant she is what you want her to say i'm an undertaker i don't know i was confused but ron's friends like alexis a lot more than they do chris we agree on that one let's move all on. right you guys next up liz and david david gives me so many red flags that's really all I can say to you guys. David gives me so many red flags. The biggest red flag, he ain't over that last marriage, the first marriage, or his uh, middle school, elementary school girlfriends that dumped him. Because that's the vibe I get, that everybody he's been with has dumped him. <clears throat> Just being real with you. I don't give the vibe that David left his wives. I get the vibes that they left him, and I'm starting to see why. He seems a little bit controlling. He seems controlling. He seems overbearing. Because that clip from next week's episode with him and Liz, eh -eh, not feeling it. So his friends ask Liz questions about marriage. You know, they asked her, you know, is she looking, you know, I guess like what is the ideal marriage? What does she need? And I don't know, something like that. Because you're talking about communication. And then, you know, she's talking about the fact that, you know, she she's not married because she hasn't been in a relationship in a minute. And, uh, yeah. Oh, excuse me, y'all. I mean to burp in y'all face. But, yeah, with, with David, David just gives me the red flags. It's just like a flashing red light. Boom, 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 boom. Like, that's what David gives me. Let's move on. Let's talk about Kyra and Jason. So, Kyra and Jason went out on a date. That date, I thoroughly liked it they went to an art they went to an art gallery i'm like this is a date this is a date this is a good date dinner a movie or art gallery like take me somewhere that take me somewhere where it gets a conversation flowing you know what i'm saying that's what i think of a date take me somewhere where the conversation can where we can have a conversation with you i'm not and i'm not saying that you can't have a conversation at a park I'm not saying that you can't have a conversation over volleyball but 
if it's a laid back, if we just if we just say, hey, let's just you know, if it's just um, a spur of the moment and it's a laid back thing, then yeah, take me some. You can take me somewhere like that. Take me bowling. Take me wherever. But if it's something that we've actually sat and planned out, I expect there to be some thought into that. I would expect that there would be some thought into the date. Just me personally, like if I ask somebody out on a date, then you know. It, and it, it like I said, it just depends. If we're just going just to have, if we're just doing something just for fun, then we will go, we'll do something fun. But if it's just a, a, a date where we're trying to talk to each other, get to know each other, we're going to be in an intimate setting. I think that's the thing that some of these dates are missing. They're not intimate. That's really what it is. I think that some of these dates are just not intimate. And then I also said with um, Jason, Jason is playing us. Jason, stop playing with me. Like you are not interested in Liz. You like Kyra. You like Kyra. Stop playing with Liz. And that's really what I said. Stop playing with Liz. Um, should we wrap the episode up? Yeah, because I think I've been talking. I think I've been talking for too long. I think I've gotten on my soapbox one too many times in this episode. I really didn't try to, but uh, yeah. So the men meet up with Tommy to do their deliberation, and the deliberation is what pissed me off. I'm gonna keep it one thousand percent honest with you guys. The deliberations pissed me off. And more specifically, Joel. Joel, I got to be real with you. You know, he upset me in this episode with the deliberation. He, you know, for weeks, Vernicia has been his number one, right? Vernicia has been his number one. But in this one, he took what his friend said to heart. He feels that Vernicia is, could be clingy. Again, like I said, I don't get the clingy vibe from Vernicia. What I got from Vernicia was the fact that, you know, you're she you're her number one, but she doesn't feel that, you know, especially after finding out that you and Amber kiss, although it was on the cheek, she just feels some type of way about that. I just don't think she's it's not that she's clinging. It's just that you're her number one and she would hope that you're her number one. So um, most likely are you. OK. Oh, you sorry, you guys, my best friend. Um, we are texting. I'm asking her if she's going home for Juneteenth. Uh, so yeah, um, I don't get a clingy. I don't get the clingy vibe from Renisha. David, David also pissed me off. He was talking about Liz, dude. You ain't got no room to talk about Liz. You need to seek therapy. Period. Point. Blizzank. Seek therapy. So Tommy's asked the men. This is where I really got pissed off. So Tommy asked the men, if you had to pick one of the ladies today, who would you pick? So AJ said, um, Kyra. Not, no shock there. I, I wasn't shocked by that. So then he goes to Joel. Joel, who would you pick? Um, I would pick Kyra. I was like, Kyra? Even Chris was like, Kyra? For weeks, Bernicia has been your number one. But now you're going to throw us a curveball? And say Kyra. Kyra. Have you went on a date with Kyra? Have you text Kyra? Have you even saw Kyra's feet? Kyra. 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 Okay. Right. So then he asked David, who would you pick? I got to pick one? No, nah, you got to pick Santa Claus. Nope. You got to pick the door. Nope, you got to pick your ex-wife. Yes, one woman. Who does, this, who does this dude say? Kyra. I'm just like, oh my God. What kind of voodoo has Kyra put on these two fools? Kyra. Again, have y'all even, have you been able to smell this woman's perfume? You're wearing Chanel number five. Ooh, you wearing pink from um Victoria's Secret. Ooh, you wearing Elizabeth Taylor. I know that's old. I don't know too many. Um, Sorry, guys. I don't know too many women's fragrances. Gotta be real with you. Well, actually, you know, I do like, I'm very, I'm very interesting when it comes to fragrances. I don't, so when, 
Now my lotion that I showed you guys earlier, that is the first time I've ever found a men's lotion that I like to scent up. Cause I typically wear women's lotion. I love women's lotion, sorry. Gotta be real with you. I've always worn women's lotion since I was a kid. My mom used to hate that about me. She was like, I buy you your own lotion, but yet instead you come in and take my lotion. I'm like, cause your lotion smells better than mine. So, 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 so then she said, that's what it is. So you like a, a lotion that has a scent. I'm like, yes, I do. I like a lotion that has, has a scent. I like a sweet smell on a lotion. Actually, is this sweet? Yeah, it is a sweet smell. Like I like a, I like a sweet smell on lotion. I have to remember. I, I like a sweet smell on lotion. So she was like, that's what it is. Cause she would buy me unscented lotion and I just don't like unscented lotion. I like lotion that has a smell to it. Like I like, you know, cucumber melon. Oh, that is my favorite. Like if you, if you want to buy me a lotion, buy me a cucumber melon. Oh, I love that smell so much. That is the best. That is my favorite smell. Cucumber, lo cucumber melon. I like anything with strawberry in it. I like cucumber. I like melon. I like strawberry. I like anything. I like anything that has a, a rather sweet aroma. I, that's, I always thought that was weird until I met my best friend's brother. He's the same way. So I'm like, oh, so I'm not the only guy that likes <laughs> lotion that smells good. And it's women's lotion, unfortunately. I don't know why they make lotion for men that don't have any scent. Actually, I got another one. This is aloe vera. This smells good. Yep. Ooh. That's scented as well. Like, I like a scented lotion. I'm sorry. I love scented lotion. How in the hell did I get on scented lotion? How in the hell did I get on scented lotion? What the hell was I talking about? What in the hell was I just talking about? How did I get off on that tangent about lotion? Oh, Kyra. Yeah, like, did y'all smell? Did, do y'all know what kind of lotion she wears? Do y'all know what kind of perfume she wears? Have y'all seen her baby toe? Have you seen anything like for y'all to be picking Kyra as y'all's number one as, as the person that, that if, the, if the show was wrapping up today, y'all would pick Kyra. And, you know, um, who else? Who else did I not mention? So it was David, Joel and AJ. So then you got Ron. His, he said Alexis. Chris, he said Amber. And Jason said Kyra. And I'm like, exactly why do you keep playing with Liz? Like, I don't like, that's the thing with some of these men. I feel like, actually, you know what? The more I think, the more I sit with myself and the more I think about it, the men, I don't think that these men, as much as they want to say that they're ready to love, I don't think any of them are. I really don't get the feel that any of the men are ready to love. And you guys know that from the beginning, I like Joel. Actually, you know what? I will take that back. I think Chris might be ready to love, but if y'all ready to love, oh, I just hit myself. Oh God, that hurt. But yeah, I think we need to start over, scrap this season and start over. Cause I just don't feel like these men are ready to love. I feel like most of these men came out here just for the notoriety, you know, to be on television, but you know, you guys can agree, disagree, I don't know, but that's just my personal opinion. So then we get to the, you know, we um, get the guys to go out with the girls. So Ron went out with Liz and Chris went out with Chris. She, it, her attitude, it was stank a dank dank. I was so glad that he sent her home. I mean, you know, Ron seemed nervous when he was talking to Liz, but they said that Liz was still ready to love. And then he did mention the stiff comment. I'm like, that came from Jason. That came from Jason. But Jason, if you feel like she's stiff, why have you been giving her the time of day? Make it make sense. It doesn't. You guys, I've been on my soapbox for too long and I'm getting off of it. That is ready to love the review. Let me know what you guys thought about the episode overall. Leave your comments in the comment section below. Subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell button so you guys are aware I want to drop anything else and share this video into the next one, guys. Do me a solid favor out there. Stay safe. Take care of yourselves. Remember to wash your hands, wear your mask or not. Whatever you do, be safe. Stay blessed, you guys, and I will see you guys in the next one. So I won't see you guys again until Sunday. We got a lot of videos on Sunday, so I'm doing, once again, Baddies ATL. I am doing Real Housewives of, nope, Merit to Medicine. 
Um, we're doing The Shy season four, like I did last season. We're gonna do The Shy, and then we will also be doing, um, what's that other show I do? Pose, how the hell did I forget about my favorite show, Pose. So yeah, I'll see you guys for all those. So the order that those shows will probably go will be, The Shy will probably be the first thing that'll be up. You guys could probably expect that by noonish or one. You can expect that in the afternoon. So it'll be up in the afternoon. Also, you guys, I'm so it'll be up. Um, I'm going home tomorrow because tomorrow my little um, cousin who it was born, born on my birthday, it's Elise, she is graduating high school. She is an early graduate. That is my baby. I'm so extremely proud of her. So I'm going home to her graduation tomorrow. So the videos will probably be a little bit late, but yeah, it'll be the shy first and then it'll be baddies ATL and then followed by Merit to Medicine and also Pose. All right, you guys, that's it. I hope you guys have a great night. I hope you guys have a great weekend and I will see you guys later. And Misha, I'm looking forward to your review because I know you're going in. I'll see you guys later. Bye, guys.